in my Harbor Freight 10 by 12 greenhouse and in the greenhouse because I'm going to shoot a video about what my uh, feelings are about it. But what this video is about is solar production for April and May. And a bad thing happened June 3rd. Uh, my Tesla Solar City Delta, whatever you want to call it, H6 inverter, it's a 6000 watt inverter, failed. And it was hooked to uh, uh, 12 311 watt solar panels. So it was only producing about 3,700 watts, so well under its maximum capacity of 6,000. And it failed on June 3rd. Right now I have my Xantrex hooked up to half the panels, which is six. And uh, the door is just shut on the solar building. I mean, to my uh, greenhouse here. Woo! It's like 98 degrees in here. It's hot. But anyway, uh, just want to kind of go over the production. And uh, I did shoot a video for uh, uh, April, which I'll show after you get done with this introduction. And why I didn't show it is because uh, I wanted to do April and May, and then the first third of June, and I had the failure of that inverter. It was put into service uh, on April the 17th, so it was basically one and a half months. It was doing well. The record day for it was uh, May the 10th and the 11th, which is producing about 28 kilowatt hours, which is really good. Uh, let me tell you about the other other uh, inverters I have. I have a Sunny Boy 5000, which has a transformer in it. Now the the Tesla Delta H6 inverters do not; they're transformerless, so there's no transformer in it. Do I love rather have? I'd rather have a transformer if I they're a little bit more expensive. The Sunny Boy, for example, I, I want that the 5000. That was not involved in my fire that I had at my solar building. All my inverters are outside now. They used to be all in the solar building. Um, it's designed to last probably 20, 25 years, maybe longer. Uh, the uh, the maximum production on that was on uh, May the 11th, which is 36.45 kilowatt hours. So it doesn't go up to uh, the 5,000 watts, but close to it. The uh, Sunny Boy 2100, which is hooked to the used sharp panels I bought from Japan, and the record for that is 14.45. There's 12 of those 175 watt panels hooked up in that. That was on May the 12th. And the Tesla number one, that's the first one, and that's hooked up to more than 6,000 watts. Remember, it's only a 6,000 watt inverter. That's the H6 inverter. And the record for that was uh, 46 kilowatt hours in one day. That was April the uh, 15th very very good and it's quite warm in here so the purpose of this is to tell you that in, I could tell you that the Tesla number two that's the one that failed and with its Antrex uh, in April it produced 372 kilowatt hours in May when it was all by itself and all the production figures go to that it was 517 kilowatt hours just want to go over my EV usage because April I hardly drove and you can see sweat running on my face because it's probably heating up to 100. Um, I only use 38 kilowatt hours uh, EV in April and 83 in, uh, in May. Nodak, that's the uh, company we get the, uh, our grid power from. We use 556 in April and 340 in uh, May. Our production, total production for solar, because uh, I have a meter on it, is 2,043 for April and May it was uh, 2,868. My bill for um, April was minus $18 and then my bill for May was minus $40. We get paid um, about 4.6 cents a kilowatt hour of uh, electricity that we feed back into the grid. So that's an update. I want to show you the video that I shot uh, over a month ago about my April production. Uh, May was better, obviously, because uh, it produced uh, over 800, about 825 kilowatt hours more in April, and in May, excuse me, than in April. 
So I'm going to stop right now because it is warm in here. I want to go over my April numbers with you. This is a utility meter and it's probably very accurate, but I didn't hook this up to about April the 7th. And in this jumble here, it's because I had a little fire and that is going to be repaired here in the next couple months where all that will be put through a fuse box. As we go over here to my inverters, I want to go over the April production. Keep in mind that uh, this is a 5,000 watt Sunny Boy inverter and April it produced uh, 693.27 kilowatt hours. It has 24 panels and these panels are 215, well 210 10 watts. They're evergreen. I bought these about 10 years ago of a company that the Obama administration financed and went bankrupt and these were panels from the bankruptcy that I bought a pallet load of them. There are 24 of them. And these panels ideally would be producing 540 watts but on solar noon and how you find solar noon is morning sunrise sunset divided by two a couple days ago it was 125 here in North Dakota and the output at solar noon was 4431 watts which is 88 percent and keep in mind that the efficiency of these inverters are between 95 and 97 percent maybe some of them say 98 I don't know but the efficiency of these panels being that they're 10 years old they were put in production five years ago is 88 percent as we go down to the next inverter we're going to go down to our solar city inverter here and these are uh, 175 watt panels I bought about three years ago and they were three years old when I bought them if you look at them they're all in Japanese because these came from a farm in Japan and the sharp panels are 175 watts and they are attached not to the solar city inverter but to my burned up smoked up 2100 sunny boy I really like sunny boys they're very good inverters. They have a transformer in them. They're very heavy. And there's a difference between a transformerless and a transformer inverter. I'd say this one weighs probably 90 pounds. That 5,000 down there weighs 125 pounds. So anyway, this inverter right here, let's see, it is attached to the 12 panels the 2100 and that is 2100 watts and it produced at solar noon 1813 which is 80 percent percent efficiency keep in mind that these panels are over six years old so our next inverters are attached to these panels right here these are 315 watt panels there are 12 of them and these off you know these ground mounted panels are ground mounted and there are 12 of them and 12 panels at 315 watts is 3780 now this is a transformerless inverter this weighs about 62 pounds this is made by this was made for solar city it's a german design called an h6 it's a german design and it's made in thailand and it's for Solar City or Tesla. Now, this particular one, these 12 panels, maximum production is 3780, and they were producing at solar noon 3787, 90, 95%, and that is the efficiency. So they're producing full power because the efficiency of this inverter is about 95, 97%. We will go down to this is inverter number two Tesla and inverter number one is hooked to 20 panels and this is my first one I really like these these things you can get for about six hundred dollars and they call them now uh, Delta but they're still if you look over here 
they'll still have the Solar City. They, I think they bought out all the ones at Solar City because probably all the new inverters got Tesla on them instead of Solar City. These are attached to 20 335 watt panels. And these I bought a year. Well, they were installed a year ago. So I bought them two years ago. And these panels, this efficiency of this is what I call number one. My number one Tesla. They're 6,700 watts, those 20 panels. But this is a 6,000 watt inverter. Right now, you can see I'm producing 47.82. It's 10.25 in the morning. So we haven't hit our efficiency time for the sun. But these uh, efficiency on these are about 91%. Keep in mind that these produce more than this thing will output. So I can't blame it on this inverter because you know it's 6,700 watts production if it was full. And right now the maximum I can produce is about 6,100, which equals 91%. So, total production for the month, let me get to the page here, I produced 2,238.278 kilowatt hours, and I consume from the grid 556, and that averages 18.5 kilowatt hours a day that I consume from the grid because, you know, the sun doesn't shine at night. So... The advantage of these type of inverters and why I bought them is because you can hook batteries up to this. These can be, this is a hybrid inverter, and they can be used with a Powerwall 2. Probably a Powerwall 1 if you have that. So I have two of them here, and that is another experiment that will happen some other time down the road. But I'm very, very happy with these inverters. So that is uh, my update for April. Um, you can hear the paper rattling here as I'm looking at. Uh, by the way, I, I did measure my consumption in April of charging my EVs since we're in, in place. We're not driving very much. I only had 38 kilowatt hours I used in April for uh, charging my EVs. But that's it. Thanks for watching.